supermarkets such as Aldi are the main producers of food to most of the British population. So when horse DNA was discovered in beef produce in January, it was met with widespread public alarm. I looked to my local town, Bearwood, in Birmingham, with a population of 11,000, to find where people can go if they no longer want to shop with the supermarkets. And this is what I discovered. A high street dominated by pound shops, banks and, well, the supermarkets. There were very few independent shops. So with the high street having little to offer, I went online and I discovered the Bearwood Pantry, a local organic food cooperative. So I went along to find out some more about it. The founders of the scheme are a group of local full-time mums who came together over a desire for quality British food. We started a project initially um, where we did something called four week shopping local in Bearwood and we tried to sort of cajole some of the local butchers and greengrocers into providing um, either organic meat or just a, a wider range of fruit and veg. Um, and we didn't get much support in that, to be honest, from the high street. And so we looked for alternatives um, and we s decided we'd contact local farmers uh, and see if we could um, get a delivery to a one of our houses on a regular basis. We found a fantastic farmer, Simon Cutter at Model Farm, who um, offered us an amazing discount uh, if we could get a few orders together and then he would deliver it once a week to our house. Um, our farmer raises the livestock, he, um, he slaughters the livestock and he produces, butchers it. And so it's just like everything is from one source, so there's hardly any food bars there. So even though the meat comes from Herefordshire and, uh, you know, and it travels up the motorway to Birmingham, um, it really has hardly any food bars because um, the food that you buy in the supermarket, if our farmer would sell to, let's say, Waitrose, he would have to get all his livestock up to somewhere in Yorkshire where it would be slaughtered and then distributed again. So it is really, um, you know, a much more direct way of shopping. Unlike meats, fruit and vegetable availability is totally dependent upon what's in season. You will never have a shortage of beetroot in your life ever again. Yeah, beetroot is always there. Um, it's like a, I have become a dab hand at turning parsnips into all sorts of things as well. And um, yeah, and you know, in the size of vegetables, I mean, we currently have a parsnip that's that long and that high. So, you know, that can feed us probably for a whole week, just that one parsnip. So yeah, you, you get inventive. So at the moment we're looking, you know, we're looking for, um, you know, spring greens and purple sprouting broccoli and things like that. So it's slowly, slowly coming out of the root vegetable dip. is in a cooperative himself in Herefordshire, so he supplies most of the produce, apart from the bread which is baked by a local nurse. These are the veg bags that she talked about. It's been a particularly long winter, so there's a lot of root vegetables still. Um, this bag costs about £2 in value, and she talked about the size of the parsnips. As you can see, look, they're absolutely huge. It doesn't beat this one though, which is the biggest parsnip they've ever had. The week I was there, there were 35 orders out of 150 members. People tend to turn up early because whatever's left over, it's first come, first serve. In recent weeks, we have seen an upturn in membership. Um, and I couldn't say that was just because of the horse meat scandal, but I think people are looking for alternatives and they want to know where their food is produced. Okay, supermarkets. <laughs> they absolutely suck the life out of me, and I just think they're sort of killing diversity and fair trade. And, um, you know, people just general, you know, farmers and anybody really sort of trying to make a living. And it's all just homogenised. It's all the same. And I want, I want to have, you know, be able to sort of choose what I have. 
know where it comes from um, yeah, and support sort of little, little local and independent traders as well. <laughs> the supermarkets throw everything away. You know, they, if, if it's not sold by a certain time, they just throw it away. And uh, that's that, though it seems good economy to them. It's, it's it can't be sustainable. You know, you can't just keep throwing this. You can't keep using so much fuel to make food and then throwing it away if it's not if it's not in super tip top condition. You just can't do it. And it certainly looks more fun than the supermarkets for the kids too. Something that was overpowering was there was a real sense of community from this cooperative. It's about meeting your neighbour, you know, and it's doing something different. I think people come because it's fun, you get to have a chat, you know, you meet all sorts of different people that you wouldn't normally hang out with, say. And as well, I think that we also have stopped celebrating food and coming together to eat food. And it's more than just buying organic or buying local food. It's about celebrating your food together as a group, as a community. And food always brings people together and nourishes the community. Recently we applied for some funding with Unlimited and they're a, a national organisation that um, funds social entrepreneurs um, and so we had to apply and, and talk a lot about what the pantry does and about our hopes for the future um, and part of the funding requires us to, to sort of have a, a social impact on our community um, and it wasn't hard to persuade them that that's what we're doing because we are bringing something completely unique to this area. If we had a venue and a shop front and people walking past can see us, I think that would make a huge difference. And if we could run a cafe that people could just pop into and sort of find out a bit more, I think, yeah, we, we could sort of be a, a a good sort of competitor for some of the high street sort of supermarkets. Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family. I've taken to you so strong. It's clear. Consider yourself well in. Consider yourself part of the furniture. Yeah.